Sinatra. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2024 Northern Territory Sports Awards. Please make your way to your seats as we will commence proceedings shortly. Get it, 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 get it,
Ladies and gentlemen, can I please ask that everyone starts to make their way to their seats as we start, we're about to start our proceedings. There is going to be a meal break at seven o'clock. Um, you'll have plenty of time to grab yourself something to eat then. Thank you.
to their seats. We're about to begin with our festivities. Thank you. What is love? What you give is nothing I've known. What is love? What is love? Since you've been here, I finally know. Nothing to see you I love. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2024 Northern Territory Sports Awards. My name is Amanda Jarrett. It is an absolute pleasure to be your master of ceremonies tonight to celebrate all of your amazing achievements in sports across the Northern Territory, you talented bunch. Before we get started, if you are able, please do stand for the arrival of his honour, Professor the Honourable Hugh Heggie, Administrator of the Northern Territory and Ms. Ruth Jones.
Thank you, everyone. You can be seated. Tonight is the NT's premier sporting awards. It is a time to acknowledge and reward the hard work, tenacity and determination of territory sports people. I'd like to offer my congratulations to all of the nominees, finalists and winners this evening. You should all be proud to be part of this year's awards. We are, of course, having a lovely welcome to country, but I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that which we do work, live and play sports on, the beautiful Darwin, the Larrakia people, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Tonight we have a number of dignitaries with us, eager to celebrate and acknowledge your achievements. Please hold your applause to the end of this list. His Honour, the Professor, the Honourable Hugh Heggie, Administrator of the Northern Territory, and Ms Ruth Jones. The Honourable Chief Minister of the Northern Territory, Eva Lawler, will be joining us a little later. The Honourable Kate Warden, Minister for Sport. Joe Hersey, Shadow Minister for Sport, Member for Catherine. Senator, the Honourable Malandiri McCarthy, representative of the Northern Territory. Ms Kim Charles and Mr Brent Warren, Deputy Chief Executive Officers, Department of Territory Families, Housing and Communities. Distinguished guests, sportsmen and sportswomen of the Northern Territory, welcome. Are you ready to have some fun? Your hosts tonight are the Sport, Recreation and Strategic Infrastructure Events team within the Department of Territory, Families, Housing and Communities. Before we do commence proceedings, please welcome proud Larrakia woman, Nicole Brown, to perform the Welcome to Country. Thank you, Amanda. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Maladma Bachiwa, that means good day in my language. To those that have travelled from far and wide to join us, Damriliji, welcome. For the rest of you like me who get to call this magical place home, how lucky are we? We come together on this ancient soil rich with the footsteps of my ancestors, the stories of their dream time and the spirits of Larrakia country, home to my beautiful saltwater people. As a descendant of theirs, I pay my respect to those that came before me, other current and emerging Larrakia leaders in the room, and my Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters in attendance. I come from a long line of empowered mob, and because of their wisdom, their guidance, their love and their teachings, I get to stand proudly in front of you as a leader in my community. Storytelling holds a profound significance for my people. It serves as a vessel for preserving culture, passing down ancestral knowledge, and reinforcing identity. Through oral traditions, legends, and myths, vital teachings about history, spirituality, and our connection to Mother Earth are imparted from generation to generation. These stories not only connect us as individuals to our roots, but also fosters a sense of belonging and pride in our heritage. Tonight I want to take you on a journey, sharing stories firstly of my people and secondly our way of life. Born here 39 years ago to my Larrakia mother, I've had the privilege of witnessing my beautiful home grow, becoming the melting pot of cultures it is today. Rich, diverse, modern, mixed with the tradition and history of this country. Since time began, we had a vibrant traditional society based on our close relationships with neighbouring groups, including the Tiwi people, the Wagat people and the Wulna people. Throughout history, we know our mob bartered, they traded, and they established a thriving economy based around the preservation of cultural heritage and natural resources, community empowerment, reconciliation, healing and sustainable development. One of those natural resources is the massive blue water that surrounds our shores, the picturesque Arafura Sea. That's how we got our name, saltwater people. The northern part of this continent was an incredible natural draw card for adventurous explorers from all around the world. It's where my old people stood as they watched different coloured people on, unknowing flowing, on unknown floating objects descend on their coastline in 1839, signalling the beginning of colonisation. We lost our language, we lost our culture. I think a lot about this and how scared my people would have been. 
In the 185 years since, we've faced many significant moments in history head on. Continued European settlement, World War II, Cyclone Tracy, and in more recent times, the 2023 referendum. It's been challenging, but we survived, we endured, we regroup, and we'll continue to forge ahead as we always have. Our cultural practices, song lines, and ceremonies continue to this day, one of which is the welcome to country. From time long gone, this important ceremony brought together mob from neighboring lands with a big gathering to showcase the beginning of something new and to let ancestors know who's on country to keep them safe while they're traveling. And that's why I'm here, to make sure my old people keep you safe. One of them was Nungalinya. He was the creator and protector ancestor of Larrakia people. His story is widely shared amongst my mob, and I encourage you as visitors to this country to head down to Casuarina Beach at low tide, look out into the water, and spot the lo long flat rock formation known as Old Man Rock. The energy in this area is just incredible. We're now in the Mayalema time of the year, one of the Larrakia seven seasons. Mayalema is the name for spear grass. The flowering of the spear grass signifies the start of the Aniba, the goose egg collection on the floodplains. As the spear grass heads turn brown, the eggs hatch, marking the end of the goose egg season. Knock them down storms, knock the spear grass over, and mark the end of the wet. When I woke up together, and I, when I woke up this morning, I checked the temperature, and it was 26 degrees. There was a slight chill in the air, and I know dry season's coming. And with that, camping, the smell of bushfires, and being on country is something I'm really, really looking forward to. To close, I want to impart a shared experience of mine with you all. As a leader, I've done a lot of reflecting about the path I'm on now because my old people already walked it. Their journey has attached itself to my everyday thoughts because they came before me, because they were the custodians of stories, and because they were the keepers of my sacred ancestral bloodline. The one commonality they had was the love for their family, their people, their land, and their community. First Nations people share one of the world's longest and richest DNAs, and that in itself gives me hope for the future of my people and for the future of all Australians as we walk side by side together. As we come to the end of this short journey together this evening, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and listen to these beautiful words spoken by one of my Larrakia elders, Auntie Bandilla Mills Raymond. In her words, she shares, We talk to country, our country talks to us. This is Larrakia country. We are Larrakia people. We'll always be here. Please respect our country. May your time here be filled with learning, understanding, and unity. My hope for you is to feel the embrace of the land, connecting with its history and its future. And I ask that when you leave, be reminded of our shared experience and that of the diverse cultures that make up this great nation. Congratulations to our amazing territory sports people. You're all winners in my eyes. Thank you for acknowledging my people and country by having me here this evening. Thank you so much, Nicole Brown, proud Larrakia woman for that beautiful, in-depth um, and very warm welcome to country. I have a couple of housekeeping announcements before we do begin. Toilets are located back out through the main doors and in the foyer down the end. A designated smoking area is directly outside the hall in the harbour boardwalk area. We have two bars tonight with a range of beer, wine and soft drinks. You can find one of them at the back of the room and one to your right. You're welcome to visit the bar at any time, but please do make sure you're nice and respectful for those that are on stage at the time. The meal tonight will be a buffet style with four stations located at the back of the room. I think a few of you were hungry and already got into it. That's good. This night's about you. It's about celebrating. Details of what is offered at each station is on the back of your table cards. When we break, I will invite the dignitaries to visit these food stations first and then everyone else. Good on yous. Jeez. No, that's okay. The staff will escort you to the emergency evacuation assembly point on the grass area of the waterfront precinct in the um, event of an emergency. Please remain calm. All right, I would now like to welcome the Minister for Sport, the Honourable Kate Warden, to deliver an official welcome. Thanks, Amanda. And I think the foods are free for all. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, why not? Apologies, I did go a little earlier. I'm hungry. 
I think we've started, so I can't see anybody out there at all. That light's really bright this evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 Northern Territory Sports Awards. It's fantastic to have you here. It's also a great pleasure, as always, uh, to welcome His Honour Professor, the Honourable Hugh Heggie, AO, PSM, Administrator of the Northern Territory, and Ms Jones, thank you for, for being us and, uh, here with us. And I also know that Eva Lawley is, she's got another function first, but she's uh, coming a bit later because she didn't want to miss this event at all. I also want to, and I can't see you out there, Joe, but I do know you're just over there. Uh, Joe Hersey, the member for Catherine, has joined us uh, this evening as well. So thank Thanks very much for coming this evening. Other special guests, and um, no disrespect, Your Honour, um, but most importantly tonight we're here to celebrate, uh, we're, uh, the most important guests are those that we're here to celebrate this evening. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet this evening, the Larrakia people. I pay my respects also to their elders past, present and emerging. And I do really thank uh, Larrakia woman Nicole Brown for that beautiful um, welcome, such a warm welcome to country and we learn something each day uh, when we hear those uh, presentations. It's really great to have the privilege to stand not only on Larrakia country but also that many of us get to play and train on every day. It's important to recognise that. Can I start by saying how darn good everybody looks tonight? I think um, it's really good to see, and I know, I'm, you know we often see each other out at the sporting fields. We just don't look like we look tonight, do we? <laughs> I did already walk past a couple of people and I had to take a double take just to make sure it was really you, and I'll probably do that a bit more this evening. But it's really nice to get out of our netball uniforms, our footy or our hockey uniforms, you know, our gym gear and get here and celebrate the successes of the sporting champions both on and off the playing field over the last 12 months. It's really important to do this every year. And it's always a great honour to be with you all here this evening and celebrate. As you know, or you might not know, but I'll let you know, there are nine categories this evening that recognise players, coaches, officials and volunteers. We saw, we'll also award some very, very worthy recipients with the Steve Abala Role Model Award, the Roll of Honour and the Hall of Champions. And as you walked in, you saw those greats of sport and it's always good to remember every year all of those people that gave so much. I know I don't have to tell any of you here that sport is very much a way of life in the Northern Territory and it all begins at the grassroots levels. And I know that because I'm watching my young grandsons, they're only five and seven, you know, the start of their sporting journeys and it's just uh, amazing to see the coaches that wrap around them and give them that support. Equally, it's, more, it's not more important are the endless hours that our officials, administrators and volunteers contribute each and every week to ensure that every single one of us can participate. And in preparation tonight, I did think, where would we be in sport without them? I think that um, we would actually um, have sport that would be complete chaos figure it without our officials and umpires. Can you imagine us all trying to make up our own training decisions at training uh, or no training provided at all and who would call the shots mid-game? That would be very interesting to watch and settle all our mid-game disputes. Actually, it might be a moment. I know there's a netball crew here tonight and I will apologise to all the netball umpires in the room this evening uh, for my years of on-court belligerence. But, um, <laughs> You guys do a great job, and I know of all of the officials across the Northern Territory that I see week in and week out, amazing job. And I really appreciate, and I know everybody in the room does, the role that you keep play to keep us focused on being involved, improving ourselves and achieving our goals, individually or collectively, and most important, really enjoy our sport, no matter what it is you do. So thank you. In a broader sense, the Territory has seen plenty of sporting events across 23 and 24. And I don't know how many of you got out last night, but a sellout crowd uh, to the Eels game last night was superb to see. And we did see Territorians continue to achieve outstanding performances nationally and abroad. In 23, we hosted AFL and NRL matches with sellout crowds again. We saw the Eels and the Broncos in 23 come to Darwin and the Gold Coast Suns. We saw the Adelaide Crows. We saw the Western Bulldogs playing elite AFL, all inspiring our younger athletes. We also saw the Melbourne Football Club and the Greater Western Sydney play at AFL at um, Traeger Park down in Alice Springs, inspiring our young Centralian athletes, despite it being absolutely freezing cold. TIO saw at Stadium also saw the return of elite cricket, and I know there's a bunch of cricket people here tonight hosting the Under-19 World Cup qualifiers, the top end series which fe fe featured Big Bash Leagues and Pakistan. Amazing to see that return to the top end. 
Our female champions have continued to deliver with the Northern Territory Titans NRL team going undefeated at their national championships. Phenomenal for the Northern Territory. And the City to Surf has continued its success with more than 2,000 entrants in 2023. I wonder how many we'll see this year. For our motorsport fans like me, the supercar events at Hidden Valley, along with the Fink Desert Race, my favourite, were again highlights in a very busy calendar of events and competitions. We also saw the Pint Netball Club have success in the Premier League Netball competition. And how about them Darwin Salties? Special mention to the wheelchair team. Absolutely outstanding, taking out the national championships. Good on you. And on top of all that, we saw many rugby events, community football, whether it was in Yundamu or the Tiwi Islands, through to the Festival of Hockey, and the individual performances that we'll hear more about across tonight. I think you'll all agree it's been a really slam-packed uh, year of sport in the Northern Territory. And we all take a lot of pride in the fact that for such a small population, we continue to provide a safe, friendly, and as I said, fun experience when it comes to sport as well as an environment when any athlete can reach their true potential. So lastly, congratulations to all those nominated tonight. You absolutely deserve it, and I wish you all the very best this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much. Minister for Sport, the Honourable Kate Warden. It is exciting to be part of these awards, which are literally making history as we add the names of more territory sporting achievers to our already long list of success stories. As Minister Warden said, the 2024 NT Sports Awards will recognise the achievements ter of territory sportsmen and women in nine nominated categories and three non-nominated categories. If you're a winner tonight, please make your way onto the stage using the ramp on the side or the front stairs, and please exit via the ramp or side stairs. When you leave the stage, please take a moment to pose for a photo with the award presenter in front of the media wall. We have a media wall this year, and it's just over there. All right, we also have picture this, if you didn't spot it when we walked in, the 360 videos in the corner. Maybe have a, have a little tipple, a wine or a beer, and then head on over and do some dance moves in front of that. It can be a lot of fun, and it goes straight to your social media as well. So please also get onto your socials and use the hashtag NTSA2024. That's NTSA2024 to further promote our wonderful sporting achievements in the Territory. For those of you who have friends and family who are not able to join us in person here tonight, we are live streaming the awards tonight. Hello to everybody watching on the live stream. I'm not sure where the camera is. You can go on to the Territory Families Housing and Communities Facebook page where you will find the link to the live stream. All right, it's time. Let's get underway now with the first award for the evening, the Steve Abala Role Model Administrators Medal. I would like to welcome his honour, Professor the Honourable Hugh Heggie, Administrator of the Northern Territory, to the stage to present this award. So isn't it wonderful to meet Ongara Miller, Darwin? Daranda Damagwa Batiwa. Good evening, distinguished guests. Yana Luju Naniji, respect to the Galamurjan Pilihara and the Dariba, Nari Kudlagwa, Ilangwa and Nimangwa. Translated, I send my respect to the Larakia people their elders past, present and future, and extend that respect to all First Nations persons present. It is my honour to present the Steve Abala Sporting Role Model Administrators Medal, which goes to a superb athlete in any sporting field whose sporting career has been strongly connected to the NT and is considered an ideal role model for Territory's young people. The award is named after Steve Abala, a Kurungakung man born in Darwin in 1924. 
He played Aussie rules for the Darwin Buffaloes starting at the age of 15 and later served for his country. I'll just note that my only claim to fame in footy is actually at high school. I was the ruck and Lee Matthews was the rover. And that was it. I would like to inspire you briefly by sharing my journey in sport and health. I have participated in many sports since I was 11, successful in many, and now in my mid-70s, continue to do intense exercise most days. Having competed in the Alice Springs Masters Games over many years and many different sports, um, I still exercise twice daily with running, cycling, weights and swimming, enjoy bushwalking and also dancing if that's considered a sport. As a health professional, I deeply appreciate the many benefits of exercise, physically, mentally, cognitively, socially, emotionally and spiritually. It is important to strive to do one's best and for, find joy in participation. Lifelong activity could literally save your life and I also believe it will bring you happiness, pleasure and community. So it is a great privilege to recognise the positive impact that sport can have on society by awarding the 2024 Steve Abala Role Model Award. This year's recipient has had an exceptional career in Australian rules football. He is an inspiration to those within the sport, the community and the wider sporting sector. His work with AFL in the Northern Territory and Australia has been influential. His achievements inspire many young persons and up and coming athletes. A stand up performer in the 2007 AFL National Under 18 Championships, he became the only Territorian to earn All Australian honours. Drafted by Hawthorne in 2007, he made his AFL debut in 2008, playing in every single game of the season, including an inspirational performance in De Hawthorne's defeat of Geelong in the 2008 AFL Grand Final. This 2015 Norm Smith medalist and three times All-Australian recipient, recipient played 189 games for Hawthorne and was awarded life membership with the club in 2015. In recent years, he has devoted to working with young at-risk Territorians through First Step, an alternative sentencing and youth diversion program. He is a relatable and inspiring mentor for Aboriginal teenagers, helping them to find employment and training pathways. It is my pleasure this evening to announce that the recipient of the 2024 Steve Abala Sporting Role Model Administrators Medal is Cyril Rioli, Junior Boy. Unfortunately, Junior Boy was unable to be here tonight, so please welcome to the stage to accept on his behalf the General Manager of Sport and Recreation and Strategic Infrastructure, Mitchell Hardy. Thank you so 
much, uh, and thank you, His Honour, as well. Okay, let's take a moment to meet our award assistant, Melanie, from the Sport, Recreation and Strategic Infrastructure team. Come out and wave, I won't make you say anything. Hello, let's give her a round of applause. She's doing a lot of hard work backstage. <laughs> Hopefully that was the partner. Let's also... <laughs> Let's also take a moment to acknowledge the rest of the team who have put together these amazing awards for another year. Let's hear it for them. The first category this evening is the Karen Schneider Sports Medicine Australia Safer Sport Award. I would like to invite to the stage Jamie Crane, the CEO of Sports Medicine Australia, to present this award. This award honours the memory of the late Mrs Karen Schneider and her contribution to sports and exercise physiotherapy in the NT. She spent many years volunteering at sporting events to ensure that sport was safe for participants. Karen also volunteered her time to drive important changes to policies and procedures to keep athletes safe. Welcome Jamie. Thank you. Thanks very much, Amanda. And Mel. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm absolutely delighted to be back here in the top end uh, this evening to join uh, you in this evening for the uh, recognition of so many who have made uh, significant contributions uh, to our communities. For over 60 years now, Sports Medicine Australia has been helping make sports safer. Uh, our vision is, is very simple. We want to create enhanced health outcomes for all Australians through knowledge, training and safe participation in sport, exercise and physical activity. SMA's membership is a very vibrant group of medical and allied health professionals who are deeply committed to improving safety in sport. And though our members have great skills and knowledge in their own respective fields, they recognise that other disciplines bring a valuable and often unique perspective. And this is the magic of SMA. It's, as a group, we close the gaps in the knowledge. Now, we often take safety for granted in this day and age, but as we know, with issues like concussion, uh, the research keeps evolving and therefore so must we. The role of volunteers, healthcare practitioners and officials within our sports is absolutely crucial. Uh, to be the eyes on the field when things go wrong and to be ready to respond. The eyewitness accounts from those who are physically present when injuries occur is often a major factor in helping to diagnose or assess complex injuries. So the contribution of these people can't be overstated. They underpin the safety of our sports and why we at SMA train thousands of people each year to become sports trainers. The Karen Schneider Sports Medicine Australia Safer Sport Award acknowledges someone who has contributed significantly to creating a safer sporting environment for their team, players or sporting community. And so the finalists are... Bridie Duggan, Basketball. Bridie has provided physiotherapy services for various tournaments, including the Under-16 and Under-18 National Basketball Championships and Under-17 Cricket Championships. She was also involved in the strength and conditioning program for the Darwin Southeast NBL1 team in 2022 and 2023. Bridie was recently invited for the second year to provide physiotherapy services to the National Performance Camp at the Australian Institute of Sport, a camp for the best 16 and 17 year old basketball talent in Australia. In 2023, Bridey also travelled with the under-17 Australian women's team to Papua New Guinea for the Oceania Championships, the first time an NT-based physio has held this position on a national team. Michelle Craig, AFL. Michelle Craig is the head sports trainer for the Nightcliff Football Club. She dedicates her spare time to stocking kits and making sure that all teams have a sports trainer available each week. Michelle has been in this role for the past two years and continues to go above and beyond to ensure all teams can take to the field every week. Without her contribution, the players couldn't play the game they love. Jan Ray, AFL and NRL. Jan is a sports trainer who has a busy time juggling her commitments with the NRL, AFL and AFL rep teams. She has more than 15 years experience and puts the welfare of the players at the centre of her approach. Not only does she support many teams, but she takes it upon herself to mentor and help new and upcoming sports trainers. She takes them under her wing and gives them extra training with treating injuries, aftercare, as well as injury prevention and taping.
Okay, the exciting bit. And the winner of this award is Bridie Zuggan. <laughs> It's a new iPhone showing people how little we care. Yeah. We're so happy. Even when we're smiling out of fear. Let's go down to the tennis court and talk it up like yeah. yeah. It looks alright in the picture. Well, um, <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank um, Sports Medicine Australia for um, sponsoring this award and also to Rod Tremlett from Basketball NT for the nomination. Um, I don't think I'll be making his team with my heart anytime soon, so um, I'm glad that I could help him as a physio. Um, I'm actually, this award means a hell of a lot to me um, because of the person that it was named after and the legacy that she's left behind, the beautiful Karen Snyder. <laughs> For those of you who didn't know Karen um, or have the pleasure of meeting her, she was the sun in human form. Um, she had the presence to light up any room. Growing up in the Northern Territory and in Catherine, I'd often heard about Karen and the magic things that she would do with her patients. So I just want to indulge you on a quick little story about how we first met. It was about 10 years ago and I was sitting in a room at Hockey NT and opposite me were three health professionals. And I was there to be interviewed as a part of a course to become a sports trainer. Opposite me sat a lady with short blonde hair, a very wide smile, and she had this ability and such warmth that could calm any nerves. I wish she was here right now because I'm shaking like a Polaroid. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think the biggest thing like growing, um, yeah, so growing up here, I knew a lot about her. Um, and the biggest thing was that with sports, she was one of my biggest inspirations. Um, I do remember that when, oh, well, how she did inspire me is by being there that day. Um, to me, she was like the Michael Jordan of the physiotherapy world. It was such a, like an inspiration to have her sitting opposite me. And it's a day that I'll never forget because Karen saw how much I care about others. And she said that I would always have a spot in her clinic. And so I've held her to that. This was our first professional interaction with one another, so I thank Karen for bringing me back here tonight. Um, I remember just recently I was telling Murray I was unfortunately not able to work alongside Karen, um, so I didn't see the great stuff that she did in the workplace at Territory Sports Medicine. But I said to Murray recently, Karen's son, I said, I'm starting to get a bit anxious. I'm running late for my patients, about five to 10 minutes and some days a little bit longer. And Murray just laughed and said, mate, don't stress. She would run way over that. <laughs> um, and the reason being is that Karen would put the quality of care before the quantity of time given to her patients. So if you can all please grab a glass and if we can raise a toast to Karen Snyder. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bridie. Congratulations. And I know as Karen was an inspiration to you, I actually know for a fact that Bridie is an inspiration to so many. The Territory's lucky to have her. She's a total trailblazer. Let's give it up for her again, Bridie Duggan. Alrighty, folks, I know you're probably getting a bit peckish for those that haven't eaten yet. Uh, I would like to first invite the dignitaries to make their way to the buffet stations at the rear of the room where dinner is available, and I'll be back soon um, for the remaining guests when they can eat as well. Thank you, guys. A short break.
not eaten yet, please head along to the food stations. Fill your tummies. We'll be back shortly. Yes, 
Gentlemen, please take your seats as we will be resuming tonight's ceremony in a few minutes. Enjoying dinner and the evening. 
We are ready to move on to our next award category to be recognised. All right, let's have a look. It is, it's a big one, the NT Local Performance of the Year. I would now like to invite to the stage Ms Kim Charles, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Department of Territory, Families, Housing and Communities to present this award. The NT Local Performance of the Year Award is unique because a team or an individual can be nominated. It is also an award that is specifically about top performances in a local competition. All right, as I mentioned, the NT Local Performance of the Year category acknowledges outstanding results in respect to an individual or team's performance in local, territory-based competitions. And let's take a look at those finalists. Owen Hamilton, Polo Cross. In 2023, Owen broke a 10-year drought and was the first NT Junior Polo Cross player to be selected in an Australian representative side since 2014. This selection will also see Owen represent Australia in the 2024 Australian Junior Boys team. Caleb Nickel, BMX. 14-year-old Caleb has been tearing up the track in Central Australia, but it's his performance at the NT BMX State Series and Championships that earns him this nomination. Caleb's achievements include first place over five rounds in his age group, first place in the junior superclass, second in the series after winning three rounds. He achieved the placing while being the youngest rider to complete in the category. Verdi Football Club. Football. 2023 was a big year for the Verdi Football Club in the Men's Premier League Southern Zone Division. The Alice Springs Soccer Club were undefeated over 15 rounds, scoring more than 100 goals in all competitions. They were the minor and major premiers in the competition, with the year culminating in being the first Alice Springs-based team to progress to the NT final of the Australia Cup. And the winner is... Caleb Nicol. I'd just like to thank my mum and my dad for uh, getting me everywhere. Uh, and uh, my coaches, especially Anthony, um, he's worked with me for a while. He's been a huge help. And um, the Futures and Foundations program. And also I'd like to thank my coach in New Zealand, Kurt Pickard. this evening is Volunteer of the Year. Very important. Please welcome last year's winner, Danila Lochran, to the stage to present this year's award. <laughs> Danila was named the 2023 Volunteer of the Year for her contributions to Rugby League, AFL and Equestrian. Amazing stuff. Welcome, Danila. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The NT Volunteer of the Year is awarded to an individual who has displayed outstanding conduct as a volunteer in the support, administration, promotions and or delivery of services to their sport. Let's take a look at the finalists. Esther Rica, Golf. 
As a volunteer, Esther runs all the junior programs at women's golf clinics in Gove. She is also the driving force behind a push for the Gove Country Golf Club to become the first women in golf charter signatory club in the NT. Esther also volunteers her time on the Golf NT board. Her efforts were rewarded with Golf Australia's highest achiever award, Community Instructor of the Year. Bianca Scrimjaw, NRL. Bianca has coached, captained and managed teams at a club and representative level for Rugby League and Rugby Union. She gives up her free time to serve on committees and attend camps as a leader. Bianca does this while also meeting her own commitments to playing Rugby League at the highest level. In 2023, Bianca won the NRL NT Carmen Award for Volunteer of the Year. Kirsty Kitty Sheehy, Sailing. Kitty is the rear commodore, chairperson of the sailing committee and principal of the Discover Sailing Centre at Gove Boat Club. When the club lost two key people, she stepped up and obtained accreditations as a dinghy and keelboat instructor. In her various roles, she coordinates every activity from administration to maintenance, logistics, grants, communication and fundraising. In 2023, Kitty coordinated and delivered Come and Try Sailing Days, monthly club racing and Learn to Sail programs for juniors and adults. She also won the 2023 Australian Sailing NT Volunteer of the Year Award in recognition of her efforts. Um, congratulations to all the nominees tonight and the winner is... Another woman in league, Bianca Scrimjaw. <laughs> expecting this. Um, firstly, I'd just like to thank uh, Darwin Brothers Rugby League Club and NRL NTE for um, the nomination. Um, it's been quite a journey in the women's space with um, Rugby League up in the Northern Territory and as previously said by our Sports Minister, we were pretty successful in the last NT Titans um, campaign. So. Still got a long way to go, um, but we're getting there and we're putting NT on the map, so that's the fantastic thing for all the juniors and young women coming through. Um, I'd like to thank um, some, too many to name though, but uh, people that have been supporting me through my coaching and playing journey. Um, without them, this award is not possible. I can't do the things that I want to do or can do um, without those people in the background um, assisting in me. Um, importantly, I'd like to thank my family. Um, they've been my biggest supporters, um, in particular my mum and dad. Um, I come from a big sporting background, so the um, values and beliefs that they've instilled in me is all in this award and everything that I do here on. So thank you and thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> Congratulations, Bianca, two absolutely powerhouse women. We thank you so much for the volunteer work you do in our community. Let's give it up for them one more time. What do you think? The fourth category to be recognised this evening is Official of the Year. I would like to invite Amy Butler to the stage to present the award. Amy was the 2023 winner for her efforts in officiating with basketball. The NT Official of the Year is awarded to an individual who has achieved outstanding results in officiating at an international and or national level. Favourable consideration is given to those involved with the development of other Territory officials. The finalists are... Jeremy Chin, Athletics. Jeremy has risen through the officiating process to be accepted as an Athletics Australia recognised photo finish operator and level one track official. He is the only qualified photo finish operator in the NT. Jeremy regularly attends local and national meets and in 2023 was part of the officiating team for the Brisbane Track Classic, a silver level international athletics competition. 
At 16, he is also an Athletics Australia qualified mentor. Darcy Lawrence, Touch Football. 2023 was a busy year for Darcy. He officiated in the National Touch League 2023, National Youth Championships and NT titles where he was the highest ranked referee. Darcy was also selected in the World Cup National Referee Squad Academy, of which there were only 10 places available. His selection also puts him on the pathway to referee at the World Cup later this year. Darcy shares his knowledge with junior and up-and-coming referees, further strengthening the sport in the NT. Peter Wright, golf. Peter holds a level three rules qualification, which allows him to officiate at the top international level. It was this qualification that led him to referee at the Australian Open in 2023, where golfers from a range of countries took part. Peter was the only NT golf referee to officiate at the Australian Open. Congratulations to all the nominees. The winner of this year is Peter Wright. Wow. This is very unexpected. Um, I think about the, the welcome to country. Um, I grew up at Groot Island and that gives me strength. Administrator, distinguished guests, I am honoured to win on behalf of golf. Congratulations to the other finalists and nominees. And thanks to everybody across all sports who help with refereeing, umpiring, timekeeping, time and so on. Thank you to Golf NT and Golf Australia for their support. Also to the Northern Territory Government for helping officials like me through initiatives like the High Performance Officiating Program. And for helping us get invaluable experiences at some fabulous tournaments across Australia. So then, when we come back, we referee events in the Northern Territory. The standard of officiating is as high as anywhere in Australia. Thanks to the other Golf NT and Golf Australia referees for the fun and collegiate culture that we enjoy. In the past, people like Trisha Clark, Jason Derugio have showed the way for aspiring officials like me. And these days, it's great working alongside at events with people like Amy Grosbach and David Annesley and the Golf Australia staff. Thank you, of course, to my family for helping, uh, helping me prepare for referee exams, uh, coming up with some tricky practice scenarios and bringing me coffee to the golf courses. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks also to Mervyn Master of the Palmstone Golf Club for teaching me about 20 years ago about the rules of golf and how to set up a golf course for a competition. It was a strong platform to build on to get to this point today. Thank you again to the Northern Territory Government for acknowledging the important role that officials play in sport. Whilst playing sport at any time socially is fun and a great thing to do, if you want to know that you beat your mates fair and square, it helps to have an umpire or referee around. Hopefully, it makes the competition a better experience for everyone. I'm very, very happy to be involved in golf at the moment. It's, uh, it's moving in a really good direction. The Australian Open now sees female, male, and all abilities golfers on the same course, at the same time, with the same prize money for the females and males. And I'm not sure if or how refereeing will fit into golf, like with indoor golf, like X-Golf, or putt-putt, or driving ranges, uh, but with golf being a sport for people of all ages, from the very young to the slightly older, I'm looking forward to finding out where that goes. Thank you very much. Have a good night.
congratulations, Peter, and thank you so much, Amy. The next category to be recognised this evening is the Eric Johnston NT Coach of the Year. Please welcome last year's Coach of the Year for Boxing, Michael Rockford, to the stage to present this award. Like a couple of our previous presenters tonight, Michael is a 2023 award winner. He was named last year's Coach of the Year, having won it in recognition for his work with boxing in the Northern Territory. The Eric Johnston Coach of the Year is awarded to an individual who has displayed strength of character in the role of coaching, contributed to the development of their sport, demonstrated personal development and achievement as a coach, and achieved outstanding athlete performances at an international and or national level. The 2024 finalists are... Alana Field, Sailing. Alana was named the Sports Professional Winner at the Australian Sailing Awards, which recognises Olympians, Sail GP athletes and experienced officials, coaches and administrators. Her win was the first time someone from the NT has been a national winner and only the second time someone from the NT has been a finalist. Alana's win recognised the Darwin Sailing Club and its Discover Sailing Centre as one of the most successful in the country. Nicole Mutimer, Equestrian. Nicole coached the NT team at the Australian Interschool Championships. Over 2,000 competitors from around Australia took part. Two competitors from the NT team placed in the top 10 in the country, with the remaining four placing in the top 15. Nicole's training and support throughout the year and at the event was paramount to those six riders achieving strong results at the national level. Udara Wirasinga, Cricket. Udara was the coach at the helm of the NT team's win at the 2023 CDU Top NT20 Cricket Series victory. He coached some of the NT's best cricketers to the landmark victory in a high-quality international tournament that included a Pakistan A team and a team from Papua New Guinea. Under-21 NT stars Michael Kudra, Tom Menzies and Harsh Brimbal were among the standouts thanks to Udara's influence. Congratulations to all coaches and the winner of the Eric Johnson Coach of the Year for 2024, Alana Field Sailing. Congratulations to all the other nominees. I'm really honoured to be recognised in this way. Um, I love the sport of sailing. I've been doing it for almost 13 years now. And my favourite thing about it is being able to help so many other people um, build their skills and get better in the sport. It's a really great um, feeling seeing people out on the water enjoying themselves. Um, thank you to the continued support of Darwin Sailing Club, Australian Sailing and the NT Sports Academy. Um, without them, I wouldn't be able to continue to grow my skills and build on my coaching. Um, if you've never been sailing before, please come down to Darwin Sailing Club. We'd love to show you. And it's definitely something that I think everyone needs to try once in their life. Thank you. Congratulations, Alana. Well done, and a big thank you to Michael as well. All right, ladies and gents, it is time uh, to stretch your legs, mingle when we resume a little bit later. In about 20 minutes or so, we'll present the remaining awards for the evening. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
is all I have. I know it'll kill me when it's over. I don't want to think about it. I want you to love me now. I don't know who's going to kiss you when I'm gone. So I'm going to love you now. Like it's all I have. I know it'll kill me when it's over. I don't want to think about it. I want you to love me now. Oh, 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 oh,
gentlemen, please take your seats as we will be resuming in a few moments. Ooh, girl, you 
The first 2024 inductee to the role of honour has been an NT hockey player, coach, team manager, umpire and board member for nearly four decades. At the local level, she has been a Nightcliff Tigers and Waratah Hockey Club player, coach and umpire. She has been a club delegate and umpire of the Darwin Hockey Association and is also a Waratah Hockey Club life member. Our inductee's first role outside that of a player was an assistant coach to the women's veteran team in Alice Springs in 1988. She went on to become the first Australian badged umpire for the NT in 1990. Our inductee toured as an umpire and coach with many NT Australian and national teams over her volunteering career before becoming a national panel member, board member and committee member of both local and national hockey boards. Her achievements include winning the NT Sports Awards Umpire of the Year in 1992, as well as the Volunteer of the Year Award in 1992 and 1996. Her commitment to the sport of hockey has influenced and impacted countless people. The first Roll of Honor recipient tonight is Tracy Bradley. Now I know what I've awarded, um, I can sort of get things ready. Um, yeah, you can't see. Okay, uh, firstly I would like to th um, thank my children who have um, had to endure their mother always dragging them off to uh, sporting events, being dropped off at airports where my family and my in-laws would pick them up. Um, and take them off for two weeks so I could travel overseas or interstate to attend hockey tournaments. Um, and even at one stage I went away with the NT team at um, about seven months pregnant and managed a team. So thanks to my three children, who, um, which is quite interesting because my daughter now is president of Waratah Hockey Club. <laughs> When I was 16 years of old age, um, I was told that I would have to give up sport if I wanted to go on to year 12. 
Um, I just made a junior Australian hockey team and I thought, oh God, no way am I giving up that, you know. So I didn't. I didn't get a year 12 certificate, but I left and I went and was a secretary. Um, would I change anything? Not on your life. Sport has given me um, so much and I probably can't give enough back to sport that what it has given me. Um, I have many, many friendships that I've done out of it. I've travelled the world with, ho with hockey and I've also gained an education. It's also given me the person that I am today. Through the volunteering, I have learnt so much. It's taught me about leadership in the workplace and in sport, and it's just given me um, heaps and heaps. I came to Darwin for three to six months. Um, in February, I celebrated 36 years here, like every person. Uh, I had my three children here, and, it is, and I actually met um, Eva Lawler at that time. Uh, she was Eva Bellardo then. So um, I just think sport is the greatest tool out there. It just teaches you so much. And I cannot thank Waratah Hockey Club. I cannot thank NT Hockey. And I cannot thank the NT go government enough for thanking, for supporting me in my journey, in my hockey career, in my international umpiring career. Um, and thanks to the NT for everything you've given me, much better than what New South Wales was ever going to give me. So thank you. Thank you so much, Tracy. The Territory is lucky to have you um, and welcome to the Roll of Honour. And now the second Roll of Honour inductee. And a day, football. Our second inductee has been involved with football since childhood and has dedicated over 40 years to the sport in the NT. She has represented the NT in Senior National Championship on numerous occasions. One of her proudest moments was winning the inaugural Under-17 National Championship in her hometown of Darwin. In our inductee's first taste of A-grade competition, her coach had her on the bench. She was not happy but vowed she was going to prove the coach wrong. She trained hard, played her heart out and was soon in the start starting 11 and did not give up her spot to anyone. She is one of Football NT's female ambassadors during Female Football Week. In 2023, she was instrumental in the launch of the inaugural Breast Cancer Challenge Cup. Our inductee is also a member of the Women's Standing Committee, which advises Football NT's board about strategic matters relating to women's soccer. Her role is to provide advice on improving accessibility and methods to improve talent identification, growth, retention and development of female players. She has Football NT Life membership in recognition of her commitment to football in the Northern Territory over the past few decades. The second role of honour recipient tonight is Anna Day. Come on up, Anna. Let's keep the applause going for Anna as she makes her way up. Hi, good evening. What an honour. I wasn't expecting anything. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that um, has been part of my life, from juniors right through to the women's football. Um, my legacy um, and the, what I want to leave behind is to have women's growth in football and also uh, honouring um, a, a foundation for all juniors coming through, whether it's um, from the grassroots right through to senior football up to the national um, level. Um, thank you for um, the honour. That's all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> Well done, Anna. Amazing achievement. All right. And now for the third role of honour inductee. Let's see who it is. 
Dr. Bruce Walker, AM. Our third inductee arrived in Alice Springs in 1980 and joined the Telford Works Cricket Club until a broken ankle in 1994 called a stop to his playing days. He then threw himself into administration, becoming president of Alice Springs Cricket Association, a role he held for 36 years. At the same time, he organised the Calder Shield Carnival in Alice Springs and took the role of Vice President of NT Cricket. He held that position for 18 years until 2002 when he was elected President, a role he still holds today. Our inductee was Alice Springs Cricket Association's delegate on the Council's Sports Facilities Advisory Committee, participating in the development of Albrecht Oval, the design of the pavilion and the construction of the grandstand at Traeger Park. He was also instrumental in the development of Cricket Australia's National Indigenous Cricket Strategy, which led to the creation of the Imparja Cup that continues to this day. He was awarded an International Cricket Council Centenary Volunteer Medal in 2010, one of only 52 awarded across Australia. In 2013, he was made a member of the Order of Australia for services to Indigenous communities and the sport of cricket. Our third Roll of Honour recipient tonight is Dr Bruce Walker, AM. Well, thank you for this recognition. Uh, this is an unusual position for me. I'm usually the one handing out the awards. Um, so it's a little bit strange. Thanks, Kate, for, and you and the panel for um, supporting or putting forward the, the, nom the nomination. And thanks to uh, family who have provided the freedom to put a lot of time and effort into sport in general. Um, there are probably a lot of people in the Territory who have been associated with sport for the whole of their lives. I'm not sure there's too many who have been leading, chairing and whatever meetings for 45 years. <coughs> so I might uh, prevail on you to, to give you some uh, reflections shortly. I was told many years ago that if you're going to be in something in the community, chair it. <laughs> Don't muck around with the other positions. Take the role of chairman and it's very important. So as you noted in the thing, I chaired the Sports Facilities Advisory Committee. In fact, I wrote the rules for the start of the Sports Facilities Advisory Committee and the Trust Fund in Alice Springs and, and chaired that for 28 years. And I've in fact outlasted every elected member and every mayor and every employee of Alice Springs Town Council in that role. And I think there's a lesson in that. And that is that in the Northern Territory particularly, having continuity of input, don't believe the good governance rules, continuity of input is very important if sport is to advance. And I thoroughly enjoy, as part of that role with SFAC, I've had my finger on not only the uh, the grandstands and the sight screens and the nets and the, the allocation of grounds, the development of all wrecked oval, change rooms, thanks to what was the Gunner government at the time. Uh, it's the only government that's put money on the table and said, work out how you can use this best for sport. Um, we got new change facilities for women and men right across the town, a great initiative. I spent, uh, was it, I don't think it was mentioned in the, in the overview, I spent seven years as chair of the Northern Territory Sports Awards Committee uh, when they were run under Masters Games. So I've written most of the rules and criteria for you tonight, <laughs> uh, including the, the Administrator's Award. And, and note that that award was for somebody in the top end of the Territory, but there has never been an Administrator's Award for somebody in the bottom end of the Territory. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time as chair of the sports awards. I think Ian Ford's probably the only person that's left now at that time, but uh, working with people like Charlie King and others. And it was a great opportunity to get a much broader view of all the activity that goes on in sport in the Northern Territory. 
Through my role at Alice Springs Cricket and with Northern Territory Cricket, I've worked with an amazing bunch of very dedicated, passionate and at times parochial people who, who have made the job so enjoyable uh, because of the way they, they join in, the way they come together as a team. And that's, for me, been one of the, the highlights. Um, I refereed Rugby League in Alice Springs for 21 consecutive seasons uh, and will celebrate the removal from Anzac Oval in a month's time. Um, but the, again, a different group of people but uh, contributors to sport. And I would note for everybody that gets onto Facebook or whatever it is, I've stayed off social media altogether because the only way to survive as an administrator is not to see what people write about you and just get on and do it. So that's, a, that's another lesson, if you like, for survival in sport in the Northern Territory. Um, I've been, I, or currently am, the longest serving state and Territory Cricket Chair on the Australian Cricket Council and that's also given me a greater insight into where the game is going and where I would hope to lead it if I had enough years left in my life in the Northern Territory and I'm, I'm pleased that um, we've been able to contribute just a little bit and we've been able to make a mark for the Northern Territory trying to develop the Territory as an identity or a place, to give it a place in the, in the national framework and part of that role has been the ability to work with and mentor a number of chief executives and staff within Northern Territory Cricket. I'm pleased that Joel Morrison who's now the, the general manager for Cricket Australia of all their operations and events, a massive job, started off here or started his CEO role in the Northern Territory. Matt Sandry's gone to, to the ICC in, in uh, Dubai and is currently dealing with floods over there on the back of his work in the Northern Territory. Our very f our second CEO when we changed our constitution, Neil Dalrymple, is the head of World Bowls based in London. So it just proves that people, by working in the Territory, being in sport in the Territory, can go places in the world. Um, but the real joy for me is to have the ability to look back over 45 years of the development of sport and sporting infrastructure in the Territory. And there's a remarkable story. I've argued for lights in Alice Springs. We've argued for lights in Darwin and upgrading of facilities. And I think we've, we've got some outstanding, outstanding facilities right across the Northern Territory. If you can allow me one reflection, <coughs> Um, many will know, or well, those of you who have been involved with cricket will know that I've always treated <coughs> cricket and sport as a business. And in business the numbers count. And in the Northern Territory our numbers are comparatively low, so we've got to think and act differently and be noticed, to be noticed in the national and the international sporting world. It's very difficult to build a national identity or a national sporting identity or a Northern Territory team on a population base of 240,000 people. At cricket, we realise that early. We're not looking to play Sheffield Shield or necessarily Big Bash, but we are looking to make our mark on Australian cricket. In my view, Territory sports will be unlikely to advance unless we're able to play the game a little bit differently to the way they play it down south. <clears throat> I think too often we are bound by rules that apply down there and cause us to spend a lot of money attracting sides and building infrastructure that perhaps isn't, isn't all we need. <clears throat> I'll give you an example about the numbers. Over the last three years, the top end series of cricket has gone from 1.2 million viewers to 4, point, 4 million viewers in the second year. Last year, with the Pakistan Shaheens in town, we achieved 16 and a half million viewers. Now, most people say, oh, we don't worry about people viewing online. But in terms of a level of interest in what happens in Darwin, it's a very significant business indicator. That in itself resulted in us achieving the largest sponsorship we have ever received in Northern Territory cricket in US dollars from a company that doesn't operate in Australia 
and doesn't have a base in Australia. That's the opportunity that's in front of us, and I won't bore you with, with the numbers tonight, but uh, if you care to look at what's happening around you in the region and the opportunity and the change in wealth patterns and the interest in the game of cricket as a driver, that's why it's in the Olympic Games, because it gets lots of eyeballs on television and increases the revenue. So the prediction, and uh, I'll make this prediction 45 years ahead, so I won't be around, for you to laugh at. So you can be sceptical tonight or you can, you can laugh at it tonight, but you'll need to wait 45 years. So if you're young enough for that, remember this. <clears throat> it won't surprise me that if in 45 years, Cricket North Australia will be owned by an Indian cricket franchise. I won't go into the details now, but there's a lot of, a lot of the numbers that you look at can prove that. The top end dry season, gives Darwin a window into that market. The, the media rights in India are $2.3 billion a year. On this logic and those numbers, provided we make smart decisions in the Territory, I'm confident that cricket has a big future in the Northern Territory. In fact, it may be that a franchise-built stadium for T20 cricket will emerge as the best way forward if you want a stadium in Darwin. Thanks again for recognising my contribution to sport. Thank you so much, Dr. Bruce Walker, and uh, congratulations. My sister works for NT Cricket. Make some noise, NT Cricket. Where are you? <laughs> I would love to ask the lovely minister to stay on stage for the presentation of the next award, the Hall of Champions. An inductee to the Hall of Champions must be an athlete retired from representative competition for a period of five years to be eligible for selection, have been a representative of the NT at the pinnacle of their sporting careers, have achieved high levels of performance at national or international standard, and served the Northern Territory as a sporting ambassador of the highest order. Hopefully you all took a moment to enjoy the photographic display of the past inductees as he entered this evening in the foyer. It really is worth uh, a look at our sporting legends from the past, so if you haven't, please do take some time later to have a look. Tonight's recipient is... Timmy Duggan, OAM. This year's Hall of Champions recipient first made National Basketball League recruiters take notice when at just 15 he was awarded the 1992 Darwin Basketball Super League MVP title. Four years later, he joined the Gold Coast Rollers in the NBL. This heralded many firsts. He became the first born and bred Territorian to play in the NBL, the first Indigenous Territorian to play in the NBL, and the only Indigenous Australian to play in the NBL in the 1990s. In 1988, while playing starting point guard for the Cairns Marlins Continental Basketball Association National Championship team, he was named the National Golden Hands Awards winner for assists plus steals minus turnovers and games played. Once his playing days were over, the 2024 Hall of Champions recipient gave back to young basketballers as Director of Coaching for Basketball NT. He also founded Hoops for Health, an organisation dedicated to using basketball as a vehicle to engage with young people, helping hundreds of young people across the NT and Queensland. Since 2016, Hoops for Health has been conducting coaching clinics in Dondale Youth Detention Centre every weekend. Last year, the organisation was recognised at the National Rural Remote Health Awards for its dedication to health in a remote location. In 2018, our Hall of Champions recipient initiated the Cultural Safety and Basketball Coaching Resource Document for Basketball Australia. He also is a former ambassador for the Arafura Games 2019. The Hall of Champions recipient is Timmy Duggan, OAM.
Look, I'll, I'll keep it pretty quick. Um, uh, Caleb from the BMX, you, you, you spoke about your your um, you know getting to the to the game. So I want to thank my mum's here tonight, and uh, if it wasn't for her getting me to the to the games. Uh, we had a national championships in Ballarat and they drove all the way from Darwin down there back in 93. Um, and it kind of reminds me of what my partner Emma, she does now, you know, getting the kids to soccer, swimming, basketball, and I get confused some days too, get home, where, where are we going? And she gets wild with me, because you know, what's, what's happening? Um, look, really quick, the, the barriers back then, uh, when I played the NBLs, it was a mid-90s and um, three things so it was a time of Andrew Gaze you got, got to play against a lot of the legends Andrew Gaze, Lira Logans um, these guys but uh, the barriers you know I was 5 foot 11 uh, 6 foot with shoes on back then um, being an Aboriginal person from Darwin so I experienced a, a lot, of, lot of barriers on my journey doing it on my own and the last one, actually, being from the NT, uh, which now we, you know, we got a pathway there with the, with the salties as well. Um, so you didn't have to leave home. I, I left home for 13 years, so that was a that was a big part of it. So those barriers there, and then the learnings along the way to, to give back now to to what we do. So um, thank you for for this honour, and um, yeah. Have, and congratulations to all the other um, award recipients on the night as well. Thank you. Congratulations, Timmy, and thank you, Minister Warden, as well. All right, our next category to be recognised this evening is the Team of the Year. I would like to invite to the stage Tim East, Principal of School of Sports Education Northern Territory, to present this award. The NT Team of the Year is awarded to a team that has achieved outstanding results at an international, national and or equivalent affiliate competition. The team must be from or represent the Northern Territory. The 2024 finalists are... Darwin Salties Wheelchair Basketball Team. The Salties played in the National Wheelchair Basketball League where they were named national champions in 2023. The team were unbeaten over the three days of finals and took out top place in the second year of the competition. Darwin Swimming Club. The Darwin Swimming Club pulled off a mighty effort in the 2023 Australian Age Championships, becoming the first NT club to finish in the top 50 on overall points. 205 teams from interstate and overseas took part with the Darwin Swimming Club ranking 50th. The team of seven swimmers finished with six gold medals and 11 top 10 finishes. They also broke 33 club and state records and three top 10 all-time age group times. Roparoo's skipping team. The Roparoo's team of Sammy and Abby George have become the first NT skippers to win gold medals at an international competition and the only NT athletes to win at the 2023 World Jump Rope Championships. The tournament involved 1,200 athletes from more than 25 countries. The pair beat out competitors from the United States, Belgium, Hong Kong, Canada and India. In doing so, they also set a new Australian record for single rope, double under relay in the mixed 16 to 18 age group. Congratulations to the three finalists. This year's winner for Team of the Year, the Roparoos for skipping. This is a huge shock. 
Um, I'd like to start off by thanking my family, like my mum has been a huge um, representative from Skipping NT, she has been the president of Skipping um, NT and also Skipping Australia, making a huge, I don't know, contribution to the sport that we have been doing our whole lives. I'd also like to thank my dad um, to the way that he helped spot my first like backflip um, and then also putting in the hard yards to become a qualified judge for skipping. Um, I'm really happy that the sport has been able to become recognised on the NT level and hopefully take the further steps into becoming an Olympic sport. Thank you. Um, it's a really um, amazing thing for skipping, being such a small sport, to be recognised um, in something like this. Um, and yeah, we really wanted to thank um, our other teammates and um, coaches. It wouldn't be possible without them. We really appreciate everything they've done. Thank you. All right, what do you think? What do you reckon we bring out the skipping rope for um, Sammy and Abby right now? No, 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 I'm just joking. I'm joking. Have the night off, guys. Have the night off. We do want to see that backflip, though, at some point. All right, now let's move on to the final three awards for the evening. Firstly, the Masters Sports Person of the Year. Please welcome Australian Olympian Susan Grayson to the stage to present the award. Susan has been involved in road and cross country running for many, many years. She's, she's achieved one of the highest sporting honours for an athlete, representing her country at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics in the Australian Marathon team. Let's give her a round of applause. The Masters Store Person of the Year is awarded to a Masters athlete who has achieved outstanding results in respect to their performance in recognised national or international competitions. Nominations are open to all athletes considered of Masters age by their national sporting organisation. Outstanding performance must be achieved in a Masters sporting event. And the 2024 finalists are... John Birmingham, Athletics. John is well known in athletic circles for his many wins. He topped that off in 2023 with a first place in the Masters World Athletics Cross Country Championships in the men's 70 age group. John is the current NT Masters record holder for 3,000 metres and 5,000 metres. He was also named Centralian Senior Citizen of the Year for 2023 at the Australia Day Ceremonies in Alice Springs for his contribution to athletics. Philip Brownscombe, Cycling. Philip went home with the gold in the criterium of the 2023 Masters Road National Championships. He beat a large field of 22 for the win in Shepparton, New South Wales. No other territory rider medalled at the event. Jane Slater, Hockey. Jane represented Australia at the 2023 Oceana Trans-Tasman Masters Hockey Challenge for over 65s. Australia won the competition in her age group. As a result, Jane was chosen to be part of Australia's 2024 Over 65 World Cup squad. She is also a recipient of the Green and Gold Award from Hockey Australia, becoming the only NT-based player to be recognised for Masters representation on at least 10 occasions. And the NT Masters Sports Person of the Year Award goes to John Birmingham. Thank you. It's a lovely honour to receive this award. Um, firstly, I want to congratulate both Jane and Philip for their nominations um, over the past 12 months and their achievements. Achieving success in Master Sports is not an easy path to follow and it is wonderful to see both your achievements also recognised. 
personally for me, um, at my age, hardly a day goes by when I, I don't acknowledge how lucky I am to still have the opportunity to, to be able to compete in the sport that I love and have been doing for over 50 years. Many of my old friends and rivals from my earlier days um, are not so fortunate, suffering from bad knees and hips, and backs and even heart issues. Master Sport rarely features on the back pages of the newspapers, but for me and tens of thousands of others, it has such an important role to play in our lives. From the social and camaraderie benefits to the opportunity it provides to set goals and challenge yourself, its importance to healthy ageing is well documented. I say this many times and I, I believe it to be absolutely true. Master sports people are glass half full rather than glass half empty people. They focus on what is possible rather than what they cannot do. If you don't believe this and come to Alice Springs in a few months for the Masters Games and take part in something which is, um, and enjoy that special camaraderie. Some of you may be aware that I also received this award 12 months ago, very fortunate. Coming into 2020, I had other adventure travels plans for, those, for these next few years. The lockdowns and general fear of traveling too far from home led me to resurrecting a largely dormant running career. The gold medals and, and the world records that followed have been a real thrill. However, I'm not sure how long I can keep outpacing Father Time. The period of, of life that I am now in is often described as the golden years. But I tell others that I am increasingly thinking of them as the dog years. Over the, over the past 12 months, I swear I have aged seven years. <laughs> to finish, I want to acknowledge my wife and friends back in Alice and also down in Melbourne who have supported me and been thrilled with my success. Also, I want to thank Bruce Jones for his guidance in designing a training program that kept me on the right side of that fine line, reaching your best level of fitness without getting injured. So thank you, everyone. Congratulations, John, NT Masters Sports Person of the Year winner. And look at that photo. Surely that's his f Facebook profile pic. That's a ripper photo. Congratulations. All right, and thank you, Suzanne, as well, for joining us tonight and for presenting that award. The next award of the evening, it's a big one, the Junior Sports Person of the Year. I would like to welcome the CEO of Hockey and Tea, Jason Butcher, to the stage to present this award. The NT Junior Sports Person of the Year is awarded to a junior male or female athlete who has achieved outstanding results in respect of their performance at an international or national level. Nominations are open to all athletes considered of a junior age by their sporting organisation. The 2024 finalists are... Skylar Chatterton, Muay Thai. At 15 years of age, Skylar can now call herself an elite international Muay Thai proponent. After being selected in the Australian team, Skylar won silver at the 2023 International Federation of Muay Thai Association's Youth World Championships in Turkey. Placing in the competition represents the highest level of achievement in the sport. Thomas Menzies, Cricket. Thomas was part of the winning NT Strike Team in the Top End Series and Strike League. He was also part of the winning Australian team against England during the Under-19 Cricket Tour of the United Kingdom. Being part of both teams signifies Thomas's ability to play at the highest level of local cricket and at the highest level internationally. Macy Sheridan, Swimming. Macy was just 13 years old when she took home a haul of six gold medals from the 2023 Australian Age Swimming Championships. The competition represents the highest standards of age swimming in Australia and is hotly contested. There were 112 swimmers in the 13-year-old girls' 50-metre freestyle event alone. One of the events, Macy aced. Her six golds have resulted in Macy producing the best ever performance by an NT age swimmer.
Congratulations to all the finalists. The winner of the Junior Sports Person of the Year is Macy Sheridan. I'm so damn grateful. I grew up really wanna go fronts, but that's what you get when Wu Tang raised you. Y'all can't stop me. Go hard like I gotta hit it with in my heartbeat. And I'm eating at the beat like it gave a little speed to a great bunch. Um, my parents did tell me to prepare a speech for this, but I'll just swing it. Um, I'd like to say a big congratulations to all the other finalists. You did so well getting here. Um, a big thank you to my mum and dad just for always being there for me. My coach, Tim, um, my amazing friends and teammates at Darwin Swimming Club and Swimming NT for um, nominating me. I'd just like to say how much of an honor it is to get this award, considering the people who have um, won this in the past and what amazing things they have gone on to do. So it's such an honor, so thank you. Well done, Macy. Well done. Very well deserved. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage the man who heads up the team who have put these awards together for you tonight. He's the general manager of the Sport, Recreation and Strategic Infrastructure team within the Department of Territory Families, Housing and Communities, Mitchell Hardy. song of the night. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well that light is bright, I can't see anyone. But um, uh, it's my job, I can see my wife, she's waving at me. But uh, my job tonight to uh, do a few thank yous and acknowledgements and um, I can't start anywhere without first of all thanking everyone in the room tonight. Uh, your attendance here tonight is what makes these awards so special. Uh, whether it be family members, the sporting organisations or the finalists, nominees and family and friends, it's, it's you who make these type of awards wonderful and memorable for the, uh, the award winners and the finalists and the people who are involved. So I um, want to commence by thanking you all for supporting the Northern Territory Sports Awards. It's been a fantastic evening tonight, so thank you. Um, it's been astounding at the breadth and the depth and diversity of the sports and the athletes and the nominees that have um, come through the NT Sports Awards for 2024. Um, as you've seen from the finalists to the award winners, um, the variety of sports there is really fantastic to exhibit the depth and talent that we have here in the Northern Territory, but also the hard work of all the people, the volunteers, the coaches, the administrators that have done so much for the years behind the scenes to develop such a thriving sporting community here. And I think um, it's been wonderful as a newcomer to the Territory to see that unfold over the last 14 months and see it crystallise into young people who are winning the, um, the recognition that they get from representing the Territory both nationally and internationally, but also some of the long-time serving members that have built the foundations from which a lot of these sports grow from. And um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity and it's a, it's a really is an honour and a privilege to be part of that and to be part of the recognition that we can put a little bit of a spotlight on that from time from time and give those people the, the due recognition they deserve. So on, on behalf of my team, I want to thank you all for um, allowing us to have this opportunity and to be able to bring this night together for you. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge our MC tonight, Andrea. Andrea's done a wonderful job tonight. Um, she's kept things on track, so if you'd like to put your hands together for Andrea. It's never an easy job being an MC and uh, I think she's done a, an awesome job. Um, likewise, I want to say a special thank you to Jordana Mason from my team. Uh, her and the staff have done a wonderful job. Um, and yes, you can give her a big round of applause. Uh, it's been a little bit of tension in the office over the last couple of weeks because there's a lot of moving parts to an event like this. Um, and she was new to the team and new to bringing on to uh, this type of event and she's done it really wonderfully well. And she's been really well supported from Bass Management but also the Darwin Convention Centre here um, who have put on a really great show tonight. The room's presenting wonderfully well. The food was excellent and the staff friendly. So I couldn't thank the Convention Centre enough for making this event happen for us. 
Um, and lastly, I'd like to wish everyone all the best for 2024. There's a lot of sports still to go. There's a lot of events and competitions and things happening around the Territory for the rest of this year. And no doubt we'll have more extraordinary performances from Territory athletes, coaches and officials as the year unfolds. And I really look forward to seeing what other exciting competitions, events and performances we can showcase next year at these awards. So I want to encourage you all to keep continue to support, keep continuing to nominate and encourage people to nominate for these awards. Um, the panel's got a really tough job and I guess the last round of applause we have to do tonight is to thank our panel members for a really tough job and doing a great job in, in selecting the finalists. So congratulations to all the nominees, the finalists and award winners tonight. And I'd now like to hand back to Andrea as we uh, look to announce the 2020, 2024 um, Sportsperson of the Year Award. It happens all the time. <laughs> Did I get your name wrong? There's always one. Don't worry about it. Staff are used to that. Over to you. Thank you. Yeah, we just met tonight. Um, can we give Mitchell Hardy a big round of applause? Thank you so much. You and your team, outstanding work. Uh, tonight has been so enjoyable and I hope everyone's had a great time. All right. Ladies and gents, we've arrived at the final award of the evening, the pointy end. The exciting part, I would like to welcome, officially welcome and invite the Chief Minister of the Northern Territory, the Honourable Eva Lula, to the stage to present this award. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> but also thank you, Mitch, as well. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, I'm sorry I was late. I wouldn't miss the sports awards um, if I didn't have to. Uh, so I've had two other events tonight, but I was determined, and I said that to Kate Warden, um, I'll do my absolute best to be here. It's hard to believe, but I was once an athlete. Um, <laughs> I know that's hard to believe, but um, I thoroughly enjoy sport. Um, it's one of the values that I encourage all children to participate in sport. I think um, all my leadership skills that I've gained through my life. I learnt as a player, as a coach, uh, as a, um, a, a sporting executive, so being a president of a hockey club, uh, I think I learnt all my leadership skills through uh, my sporting, uh, my, my participation in sport. So uh, I strongly, always strongly encourage um, children to participate in sport. But um, I never got an award up here, um, but I've got lots of friends over the years who have won awards, and it's lovely to to walk through that Hall of Fame and see a lot of the old Territorians that um, I grew up with uh, and see them recognise that we've truly uh, have had some exceptional Territorian athletes and I'm sure we'll continue to have that. So uh, it's always a, a lovely feel to be in a room of athletes and people who care about sport in the Northern Territory. But um, my honour tonight is to announce the Sportsperson of the Year and it's awarded to an athlete who has achieved outstanding results in respect of their performances in recognised national or international competitions. The nominations are open to all athletes. The 2024 20, finalists are... Alana Joyce, Judo. Alana Joyce is a powerhouse in the world of Judo. She is ranked number one in the NT, number one in Australia, and sixth in the world in the under 75 kilo junior women's category. She has three gold medals to her name and is a former NT Junior Sportsperson of the Year finalist. Joel Kelso, Motorsports. Joel has worked his way through the NT Championships and Australian Championships to International Championships in motorsports. In 2023, he was first on the podium in the MotoGP3 World Championships and third in the Australian Grand Prix, becoming the first Australian on the podium in that race since Jack Miller in 2014. Brooke Perris, Hockey. Brooke captained the Australian hockey side during the Oceania Cup in New Zealand in 2023. Australia won the competition, cementing Brooke's inclusion in the national team for the 2024 Paris Olympics. What an outstanding lineup, and the winner is Alana Joyce from Judo. <laughs> to make it here tonight, but we've got Coach Mick, I believe, that's accepting on her behalf. I'm sure
sure she's watching somewhere. Can we please give her another amazing round of applause? Alana Joyce, sportsperson of the year. Um, this is quite a surprise, um, which is wonderful for the young lady. She's actually over in Italy at the moment, for, uh, representing Australia, and on the last weekend she fought in Poland representing Australia in her weight division. Um, she's done exceptionally well. Um, I've coached her ever since she started judo, and um, she's been one of the most fantastic people to actually coach. Um, and her, she works extremely hard. She's now moved down to Melbourne where she's with the Australian national team. Um, she is studying at university, at Monash University. Um, she's got a lot on her plate, but she is dedicating six days a week playing judo and doing exceptionally well at a national and international level. And she will be so chuffed tonight when we uh, let her know that she's actually won this. this. And all I can say is thank you to the NT government, thank you to Sport and Recreation, thank you to NTIS who have been very, very supportive of her, and also Judo Australia who have done a fantastic fantastic job in culture of giving this young lady the opportunity to do what she's doing. Thank you very much and I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Thank you so much Coach uh, Mick and of course uh, the Honourable Chief Minister as well. Now I was just thinking, I thought I'd quickly grab my phone because it's sad that she's over in Italy and not seeing all of the beautiful people. So how about I film you all saying congratulations, Alana. Is that cool? Already? You might have to turn this light down, the house lights up for a minute, please. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> you legends, thank you very much for that. All right, ladies and gents, that does bring us to the end of another fantastic Northern Territory Sports Awards. Thank you to all of the award presenters and a huge congratulations to all of the finalists and award winners tonight. Thank you to your hosts at Sport Recreation and Strategic Infrastructure who have delivered yet another outstanding awards evening. Congratulations to the team. Before everyone relaxes completely for the evening, I would like to ask all the winners and award presenters to make their way to the stage now for a group photo. Enjoy everyone. Thank you. Watch it, watch it, watch it. 